Hey, how's it going, YouTube? How y'all doing today? I took a closer look at my plans. My plans that I've been working on since yesterday are the real, real, real micro level stuff. So what do I believe is going to be happening on, on a week by week basis? So next week, these animals are going to market. When these animals go to market, I'd like to put together a lot of number one animals as soon as possible. When I look at data that has just been collected over these past few months from these local sale barns, there is a premium for about a 10 cent premium for five and a half weight calves. So uh, a two and a half weight, three weight calf, a light three weight calf, a two and a half weight to a light three and a half weight calf will go for about 320. Then a uh, a uh, a five and a half weight calf will go for about three dollars a pound. But also there is about a uh, well here in Texas our cattle just don't sell for as much. We got a lot of them. We have a lot of cattle here. But our cattle just do not sell for as much. So over uh, north of here, they may be getting two, uh, 240, 240, 245 for a commodity type eight weight animal. But over here in Texas, if if if, if I get 225, 230, I'm doing real good. Yeah, uh, that that's about what a number one animal goes for here in Texas. A number one graded eight weight steer calf goes for about 225 230 maybe a little bit higher the feeder market uh the the cattle feeder market uh excuse me the uh feeder cattle market has uh from my understanding gone up just a little bit but it's still going to be hovering around that uh, about that range so as of right now but uh Here's what the thing is that the two and a half weight calf that that's the one animal that most most cattlemen just do not want to touch. I mean these two and a half weight calves, three and a half weight calves, uh, they are uh, they are exponentially more work than a five and a half weight calf. So if I brought in a five and a half weight calf, the amount of uh, workload that I would have would be drastically lower than a two and a half weight calf. If I bring in a two and a half weight calf, I am going to be I'm going to be on my toes. I will be I will be working. It, it will be the hardest thing that I could have possibly ever signed myself up for in terms of the cattle business. It, but well, okay, but here here's one of the big reasons why it's so hard to raise a two and a half weight calf, a three and a half weight calf, a two and a half weight, three and a half weight calf, even if it's been weaned properly, even if it's been given vaccinations, if they're va if they're commingled and then sent to a different farm they are still going to get sick. Oh, you're still gonna have a lot of animals get sick. All, you know, but uh, there may be fewer animals get sick and they may get sick with less severity, but they will still get sick. And when these little calves, when these little two and a half weight, three and a half weight calves get sick, they go downhill very quickly, very quickly. Uh, they, they, they die within about three to five days. So that's one big reason why it's so hard to raise a two and a half weight, three and a half weight calf is because probably about a third of them are gonna need a shot of very high quality antibiotics. And so if the rancher does not know what they're doing, if they just, you know, if, it's, you know if, if, if a rancher does not know what they are doing, their animals will start dying very quickly. I mean, very quickly. And, uh, well, okay, so let's say I take, well, okay, here, but I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more here in a second. But reason number two that it is so hard to raise a two and a half weight, three and a half weight calf is a lot of people grow brush and they call it grass. And these little two and a half weight, three and a half weight calves, if they're gonna, you know, uh, the big reason that I that uh, I see this such a big opportunity to make money is because I'm I'm very 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 capable at managing grass. Uh, the thing that uh, that that I can do that almost nobody, and I mean, and I legitimately mean almost nobody can do, is is grow extremely high quality grass. 
if you took the u.s population i mean it may be a 0.1 percent of the u.s population that is capable of of growing a very 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 high quality grass uh, repeatedly consistently over a long period of time and so that's one of the big reasons why i uh, i see such a big opportunity in 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 in, ran, in running his lightweight stalker cattle is because i can feed them on grass i can feed them on grass and and uh, grass if i grow it myself it is very cheap so when i go and i purchase this this feed right i pay i pay even after my tax benefits i still end up paying about 200 dollars a ton for this feed but if i grow the grass myself it costs me about 20 dollars a ton uh, it, it's literally a tenth of the price if I go and grow the grass myself But the, the thing about grass is that as grass is dynamic So as it grows the the qualities of the grass change the the relative feed value of the, of the grass changes the fiber content of the grass changes the, the the protein of the grass changes the digestibility of the grass changes the amount of biomass accumulated Changes all that stuff changes and it is a continuous dynamic thing Grass doesn't just grow. It doesn't just grow from from fairy dust and water and, and, and soil. It, it needs uh, uh, managing grass is very difficult. You have to you have to you have to constantly be looking at the grass and, and, and taking notes on what needs to be done. I mean, probably every week when when I'm growing grass here, I know that it seems like a lifetime ago, but when I'm growing grass here, you know, uh, I'm fertilizing the grass every week. Because these cattle, I also cannot fertilize grass like I'm growing hay. Because if I fertilize grass like I'm growing hay and the grass comes in early and the grass comes in young, what's going to happen is that the cattle are going to eat the young grass and then they're going to bloat on it severely but to the point that they could die. And so uh, as the grass grows, it, the, the feed value of the grass drops, the protein value of the grass drops, the, the fiber content of the grass increases. Gen, uh, generally, that's what happens. But feeding a lightweight stalker calf on a grass that is low in protein and high in fiber, you're better off just not feeding it to them. I promise. I know a, a lot. Uh, if you got, if you, if somebody, if anybody out there has has lightweight stalker calves, they're two and a half weight, three and a half weight calves. It's better to not feed them the brush because if you feed them the brush, if you feed them low quality grass, what's going to happen is that it's just going to sit in their stomach, and they're not going to be able to digest it, and then. They're going to have a gut full of stomach, but they're still going to starve to death. They're either going to starve to death or they're going to develop malnutrition problems from 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 uh, not being able to digest the grass properly. They will develop malnutrition problems. I guarantee it. And I mean, if you want to go and find out for yourself, go and be my guest. But I mean, I've been, you know, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, have at it, ha, 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 you know, have a blast. See what happens. But I mean, it just is what it is, right? And so, uh, but okay. But here's also the big thing. So when I go in and I and I uh, and I look into uh, the uh, the two and a half weight uh, calf category and all that, um, the financials of it are, are one of the big things. Uh, it may seem like a great opportunity for people to make money on a two and a half weight, three and a half weight calf. Just put two hundred pounds on them and then sell them for a ten cent premium. Uh, buy number one graded animals and sell them for a 10 cent premium at 550 pounds that, that all sounds like a, a, a great idea right it is a great idea but the execution is incredibly difficult almost nobody can do it i mean when i when i when i personally drive around it doesn't matter where i go if i drive to this city if i drive to this city if i drive to this city i can see huge silent silage farms and i see these huge farms and everybody got these thousands of cattle but nobody Almost nobody is running two and a half weight, three and a half weight calves without a mama cow. Almost nobody. I'm the only person that I know that I've ever seen that runs these lightweight calves. And especially on fresh grass. Almost nobody runs them on, uh, uh, almost nobody runs them, period. And, and, I, and I'm the only one that I know that runs these small lightweight stalker calves on fresh grass. And you know these animals. The thing is, is okay. Let's say I go to the bank, right? And I take a and I take a twenty five thousand dollar loan, and I take a twenty five thousand dollar loan, and I write that off of my taxes, and the government gives me a quarter of that back. They send me about a uh, seven thousand dollars back next year, right? All of that sounds great, right? But in reality, what could happen is if I go to the bank and I take a twenty five thousand dollar loan and I buy a bunch of animals, I could end up losing 
twelve thousand dollars worth of animals i could end up losing fifteen thousand not me personally but it could happen i've seen i've seen people lose half their cattle all the time i mean it happens legitimately all the time and, and that that is the, uh, the 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 realistic outcome for what could happen in, in in the cattle thing in this whole cattle business is that people could end up losing a lot of money and then they go and they take a loan and they say that the banker says oh man you uh if you if you uh if you don't pay me back by a certain date, you owe me 25% interest and I took a 20 and I took a $10,000 loan, a $20,000 loan and I lost let's say 10 grand. Now I owe $2,500 a year in just straight interest. And so it was not worth uh, taking the loan to purchase the cattle if I'm going to lose, you know, it, it's better to just pay taxes than it is to lose a whole bunch of investment money because if I'm going to lose a, a a boatload of investment money, I would have rather just pay taxes. In all honesty, it would have been a better idea to just pay the taxes and 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 not even worry about writing writing a uh, having investments to or anything like that. It you know because if I take money from the bank, I'm gonna owe them money no matter what. I mean, I could lose my home, I could lose my car, I could lose everything, and I would still owe the bank money. They're not just gonna say, "Oh, we feel bad for you," and now you don't owe us money. You're gonna owe the bank money. I mean, and it, and it will be until you pay it off, you will owe the bank money. And so that that's one of the huge dangers about about the, uh, the 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 cattle is that if I bring in animals and they they don't do well or uh, or they start having problems etc cetera, etc cetera. like this animal right here, I fed them an extra bucket of grain this morning because they they haven't been having any grain uh, any blow problems and he immediately started having diarrhea so he's got acidosis again so I'm not going to do that again. I fed them one extra grain bucket this morning just because I had I, I have extra time on Sunday mornings so uh, and, and Monday mornings. So I just fed him an extra bucket of grain, and and he uh, he immediately started up uh, having acidosis. But yep, that that's that's the huge risk. I mean, a lot of this it ain't just like uh, I go to the bank, borrow money, and uh, and uh, bring in cattle, and then I make a whole bunch of money. That's not how this works. I mean, it is an extreme amount of risk. There there is a possibility of losing a tremendous amount of money. And so, uh, you know, I do get tax benefits and I do get to make a lot of money and I do get to develop my wealth tax free uh, through the equity in these cattle, but it's done through a, by a trade-off. I put myself at extreme risk. Almost nobody can do this. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost impossible. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.